And what gave Salsa its rhythm, what gave Salsa its, its feeling, its sound, its blueprint, was a man no other than Dizzy Gillespie, foundational black mm -hmm. American. Mm -hmm. The same person who created the bebop sound. Bebop is the mm -hmm. foundation. Everything you find in bebop, you find in hip hop. Matter of yeah. fact, bebop was in night. Bebop, bebop was to 1945 what hip hop was to 1985. It was a new sound. Mm -hmm. It was disruptive. The old people hated it. <laughs> they were like, what is this shit? It's too fast. It's too loud. Bird and Dizzy with some niggas. <laughs> they smoke weed. They didn't have their tie tied all the time and right. Mm -hmm. So your generation, your, your Louis Armstrong generation of jazz, your people who were into the swing sound, they couldn't stand these two. That's that's them on screen right now. Bird and Dizzy out of Kansas City. Mm -hmm. You see Bird mm -hmm. holding that joint in his hand right there. Mm. B, do you guys understand that how we got outlawed was because of jazz? Mm. See, don't make them make it seem as if hip hop was doing something new. Hip hop was, Correct. again, like Brother Bakari said, an era. It was the newest era of what we do. Mm. Mm -hmm. It was the newest era. Nothing was new. They used hip hop to outlaw weed. Weed was legal in the United States before 1937. In 1937, mm. that's it, they have been trying to make it illegal since the late 1800s, honestly, because of the tobacco farmers and places like that. They have been trying to make weed illegal. They couldn't. It wasn't until white kids started playing jazz. Harry mm. Oslinger, look him up, Harry Oslinger. He was quoted saying, those jazz Negroes, I'm not, I'm not giving you the exact quote, I'm paraphrasing. Look up the quote, you can find it really easy, really easily. Harry Oslinger. Uh let, matter of fact, let me let me let me pull that up real quick. Uh he he was talking about uh weed and jazz making black men more likely to rape white women. Mm. They use jazz as propaganda to outlaw weed. It was always the fear of the black jazz artists raping white women, the same thing they do right now in hip hop. Billie Holiday was, when she sang Strange Fruit, jazz, when she sang Strange Fruit about the lynchings in North America, she was banned from performing for five years. Mm -hmm. That's a much harsher punishment than anybody in hip hop had to go through talking about weed and fuck the police. Yeah, NWA got an FBI profile, but nobody got banned for performing for five years. Mm. Our jazz greats took the bullets hip hop brags about. They took them and didn't have an, another support system. See, a lot of hip hoppers like to run around talking about how hip hop come from the streets, man. Man, hip hop is what saved us. And that's true. That's very true. But also understand, going back to the words, Brother Bakari said, era, at least during the era of hip hop, you had Section 8 housing and food stamps. See, Hip hop complains about eating government cheese. There was no government cheese for the jazz grades. If they couldn't play mm. that trumpet, they didn't eat. Mm. Louis Armstrong grew up and at eight and nine years old had to play the trumpet in whorehouses to eat. Because his mother was on the streets and she basically abandoned him. And since there was no foster care system, since there was no Section 8, since there were no WIC vouchers, he had to literally play in whorehouses to eat. 
Same thing with Jelly Roll Morton. Look him up. When he was young, what he would do with Jelly Roll Morton, how he got paid, <laughs> he used to, Jelly Roll Morton used to sit when he was nine and 10 years old in a whorehouse and he had a piano and there was a peephole and he used to watch the women turn tricks on the men. <laughs> and whatever the whores were doing, he would look through that peephole and play his piano to the rhythm of how they fucking. <laughs> hip hop didn't have to go through that. And I'm not saying this to berate hip hop. I'm not saying this to undermine hip hop or to lessen hip hop. I'm here to say that, to say that this is a story that we've been playing over and over and over again. And there are different eras that the same story gets played out in. So we must have respect for the past. We must have respect for our people and our struggle and what we've gone through because soul music in America, hip hop is America's latest iteration of soul music. It's still soul music. And there's a common struggle. Question, why don't we understand this? Here's why we don't understand this. It's because black America, black people, we've had the same issues over and over and over again. We don't talk to each other. There's been a generational problem with black America since the times of slavery. The older folks don't tell the young folks shit. The old people, when they see the young folks doing something new, instead of embracing it and explaining the cultural nuances and similarities, you shit on it. You call it something bad, which causes the young people to then hoard what they had as new and protect it because the older people don't want to embrace it and talk about it. What we have it as an issue in black America is a communication problem. We don't talk to each other. We talk at one another. So we don't understand. I understand why hip hop had to feel like they had to create something new and hoard it and protect it. I get it. It's because the funk generation, the soul generation, the jazz generation didn't embrace it when it came out. See, the jazz generation could have done hip hop a lot of favors had they explained this is what the bebop generation had to go through with the swing generation. This is what the hard bop generation had to go through with the Louis Armstrong generation. This is what the funk hat generation had to go through when they were confronted against the jazz generation. Same shit. We don't talk to each other. So since we don't talk to each other, since we don't pass down information, since we don't compare notes, it's allowed these people in the Caribbean and from outside of foundation of black America to come in and claim jump what we own. And part of the reason why they feel so free doing that is because their parents didn't talk to them. Their parents didn't tell them that ska and reggae was born out of a black American soul music. So they grew up Busta Rhymes and these jokers grew up thinking that their parents were doing something new. When their parents knew they got that shit from America because Jamaica didn't have no goddamn radio stations worth listening to in 1950. So they listened to what we were playing. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with Jamaica taking what we did with our soul music and creating ska and reggae, their forms of music are beautiful. Reggae is the island's interpretation of soul music. Nothing wrong with that. It's called cultural exchange. We exchange cultures. And part of the main reason why is because our artists went to your islands, went to your countries to give the music. Chuck Berry, he went there to show you guys. Jelly Roll, not Jelly Roll Morton, he was a little before that. But Fats Domino. These are people, Dizzy Gillespie. 
this Dizzy Gillespie seated more people, more cultures with music than hardly anybody. He traveled the world spreading our sound. And he did it out of love. But we as a black people, we have to communicate generationally again. We've stopped the generational communication. We have to, have to, have to open back up. Hip hoppers shouldn't be in their fucking 60s just now learning that they were went through when they, in their 20s what the parents who was putting them through that shit went through in their 20s. This shouldn't be new information, but it is because we don't talk to each other. We don't show compassion for what we've gone through as a people with ourselves. Yet we run around demanding this shit from white people. This is some stuff that we got to start here in house. 